Hello guys, what's up? This is Patrick. Today I'm going to continue from my last demo where I designed a pitch drop sound design patch. Today I'm going to do exactly the same thing but with a wonderful free sample player called Zampler plugin available for free at pluginboutique.com. So go get yours today. It comes with 400 megabytes of Loopmaster sound. So let's get to it. I have loaded uh, an instance of Xampler here. So by double clicking it, we can see that this is the interface. Um, they have quite a great introduction video that talks about uh, every section in, in the synthesizer and it's quite full featured uh, and uh, I was pleasantly surprised. So um, I hope you like it too. Today we're just going to make use of like just one uh, section of it. Uh, I hope to go through more of these in different kind of usage. I'm going to load my bank we have the dance production sounds and main room EDM drum kits. So I'm going to load from my dance production sounds bank. I can scroll through my patches. So these are some of the sounds. So I'm going to look for a sustaining kind of lead. Okay, so let's let's just take this organ patch because it's sustaining, and we can just drop the pitch uh, like what we did with Zeta. As you can see here uh, in the display, there's this pitch up and pitch down range. So we're going to bend down. So I'm just going to ignore this for a while. You can take your mouse cursor and just click and drag. Right, so this uh, range is what's gonna be affecting your pitch bend. Okay, so I'm gonna just hit a key on my MIDI keyboard and then bend, bend it down. The, the wider range you can bend, uh, the more it will drop in pitch. If you remember from Zeta, it's about two octaves max. Uh, with this sampler, you can like drop it 64 semitones. So, um I'm going to use my physical pitch band wheel and just bend bend down my note. Okay, so so that's that's one way to 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 do a bending. The other way is to actually use a, a, an LFO. The good thing about this LFO is you can control the speed, but you can also sync it to your host door uh, digital audio workstation in time to one of the note values in the current tempo. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this LFO, generate a waveform and just going to affect our pitch. So um, I can just put this back. To be able to hear that, uh, we need to hook up this LFO to affect that pitch. So here is the very powerful uh, mod matrix. So I'm going to put this um, LFO1 and let it affect the pitch in semitones. So, and how much to affect it? So let's just push it up to a hundred first, and then now let's hold our note. So, in a very short amount of time, it traveled up and it traveled down. So, let's sync it to uh, the tempo of the door, which is one twenty. So, sync it. Now, when I before I sync it, it's just in hertz, uh, the rate of the. Okay, I'm gonna hold that note again. Okay, so it goes even faster. Then you can sync it to your host tempo. Okay, and um, why it's going like off the charts and uh, to a very high pitch is because of the amount. So I'm gonna go down the amount, like uh, drop it to like 64 or something. I'm gonna drop it to like 50. I'm gonna hold my note again. So you you can see that it's oscillating. Okay, and um, this reset I suppose will reset that that waveform every time you hit a note. I'm not sure. Uh, I have to read up on the menu. So okay, I uh, hold my note again. So you see that the the LFO is only always going in up direction first. Okay, let's try to do this to a minus 50. And let's see whether it goes in the down direction first. 
Okay. Uh, and looks like it's traveling too fast. So I'm just gonna go to a, a whole note. Okay. Let's drop it even further. Okay. So that looks like that give that gave me my drop, and it looks like my sample is not. Uh, the duration is not long enough to for it to fall and, and rise up again so that would give me my um, drop and then the sample dies so uh, I, we never hear it pick up again okay so if you don't need it to be so long I can make it shorter uh, half that duration but at the end you hear it rise up again so you want to time it to be just nice so that's even longer okay right so there you have it we managed to achieve the same kind of uh, effect in reasonably uh, hassle-free kind of method remember that uh, we were using this pitch band range uh, and our pitch wheel to to adjust it so the second method that I can use I can disable that 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 patching okay now i go back to my normal one let me show you another uh, way that we can do this i can use uh, my mod wheel to affect that pitch and let's let's try uh let's try plus 50 okay so i'm going to hold down my note so because i'm in a I'm pushing it up, and but the pitch is dropping. So in this way, I can manually uh, adjust. And uh, unlike the pitch wheel that has a um, spring loaded that always wants to stay in the center, with the mod wheel, I can just and let it rest in any position I like. So let's put it back to positive 50. So the direction and the and the direction of the drop would be the same. So I'm gonna keep it in like sort of two thirds up. And then I'm gonna hold my note. Oops, let's choose a, a lower note. Okay, I'm gonna increase my my amount of uh, the range of the note. So it looks like negative fifty works. Uh, okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try sixty-seven. So um, this really depends on how you you controlling and playing your wheel. You could end up doing uh, strange things uh, and really out of this world kind of performance like that. Um, what is good is uh, I could actually stack my LFO and my mod wheel. So when I bring my LFO back uh, and I'm playing this, you can see that it's falling. If on top of that I move my mod wheel, so you can see that it's going in a falling down uh, direction, but I can still uh, mess it up with my mod wheel. So it, it, the effects is like stacked. And because uh, and this controls how much it is being disturbed by my various controller. So you can see that LFO is doing the falling, and my mod wheel is just uh, doing whatever direction on top of that. All right. Um, okay. Again, I'm gonna disable this mod wheel. Okay, and we have back our falling sound. So and then now I can use my second LFO. To do a kind of um, uh, gating effect on this to add on to my original. So gating effect is working on the volume of the of the patch. So I'm gonna make it uh, stutter a little bit. Again, I'm gonna sync it up into like one eight, one sixteen of of my DAW tempo. And nothing's happening because it's not uh, affecting in any amount. So I'm gonna put it to a hundred. So when it gates, it totally cuts the sound. So you can hear 
so it totally cuts it. If I if I just want to cut it like halfway, I could just do a fifty, right? And I believe we can automate most of these parameters, if if not all. So if I if I automate it in my door, I can do a, um, and I don't sync it. Okay, I can I can do something like. Uh, Oh, even if I sync it, I can drop the speed. Okay, I'm gonna put it back to 100. Yeah, so you can do lots and lots of stuff. Um, the other thing that I can do is do a fade in. That means over a period of time, it sort of kicks in. So if I give it more time, so you can see that in the beginning it's not really gating. So when I when I increase the fade in time, okay, I give it more time to to be continuous before the gating effect kicks in. So and then one more time if I automate this. In real time, right. So this is how we can um, make LFOs work for us. And because there are three, there are infinite number of ways that you can control them. You can actually use one LFO to many destinations, or uh, can use other things, mod wheels, pitch wheels, after touch. Okay, and we can randomize, and we can use my arpeggiator to affect and the uh, the node value, the velocity value, foot controller, expression controllers. So the possibilities are actually endless. So and we can uh, affect our um, all of these parameters. Uh, okay. So besides the keyboards, we have effects and and the effects we can we we can turn it on and off uh, by using any of these uh, sources. So this exemplar is I think. I must say well done to the guys uh, for thinking about all that. Uh, it really turns your whatever SFZ uh, sample files that you have, you can still breathe in new life to them. Uh, even if they're loops, uh, you could do an automated filter sweep or, or something, and then to make them sound fresh all over again. So um, thanks for listening, and I hope that um, it has inspired you to make more great sounds and uh, sounds that you never thought that you could do. And all thanks to uh, the people at uh, Plugin Boutique and uh, Beat Magazine. Thanks. So I'll see you again next time.